meow, meow. Everybody, I'm Cantonese Cat. Hey everybody, Cantonese Cat here, monthly chart in Nvidia. What do I think about cycles? Let's pull up the Bollinger Band and give you a better idea in terms of what I'm seeing. You see that over time, I've talked about this over and over again, I just wanted to show you again. You see these very, very nice cycle, cycle number one, two, and we're running to the third cycle over here so far. Each time when a cycle happens, you see that whenever you have a very, very parabolic bull trend that happens, you have the Bollinger Band, the lower Bollinger Band goes all the way down to the negatives, right? And it's not until the Bollinger Band starts to rise from the negatives back to earth is when you're really starting to see this bull trend start to get a little bit more exhausted, right? And even if the Bollinger comes back, there is still a little tiny more room for it to go up until you really start to get a little bit closer to where price is, right? What you're seeing here on the cycle, last cycle, here very similar, the Bollinger Band didn't really quite get all the way down to the negative. This whole sideways over here for about eight months had really been exhausting the bull trend and the Bollinger Band, you know, really went from expansion and started contraction over here. And when it gets to back to closer to prizes, when this bull trend really have started to get exhausted, right? So where are we at at this current bull trend that's been going for about a year and a half? Let's look at it. Continue Bollinger Band expansion, right? The 20 month moving average continues to point up, right? And the low on Bollinger Band has all the way down, down to the negative. It hasn't even started to curl up yet. It's still pushing down to the negatives. This is how strong this current bull trend is. Based on what it has done in the past, there's really no reason to suspect that there's going to be a crash anytime soon. Because you really would probably end up seeing some signs for a loss of momentum before that happens. I'm not really seeing loss of momentum based on Bollinger Band. I would really expect at least for Bollinger Band to start going from the negative to get back to where you can actually see it before I join, and normally we get you know a little bit more concerned about it. If you look over at the whale institution, the red basically stands for whales, right? The green over here generally stands for retail. If you look over at the whale percentages, it's been really, really high especially for the month of May. It's just been extraordinarily high. And whenever you have something like this, you're really thinking that the bull trend could continue a lot further. You look at the RSI on the monthly, you don't really see any bearish divergence. Price gone up, RSI gone up. There's still a lot more room for it to potentially go up. And as you can see that even though it's been overbought, it can overbought, you can stay overbought for many years. Even though you see some bearish divergences on the way up, you can see the price can keep going up on bearish divergences for years. So there's really not any particular reason for me to really get too concerned over here in terms of where we are in the cycle. Most likely there's going to be some continuation. We're going to talk a little bit about price targets here in a little bit. You look at Ichimoku Cloud, which is another way to analyze what stock could be doing. And each time when you have a bullish cross, and this bullish cross on this cycle really dates all the way back to like 2013, this bull cycle went on for like, you know, really like five, six years, which is absolutely insane. Whenever you have a bull cross over here, if the price is like what, like four bucks, and the top of the cycle is around 70. It went on for about six years, and that bull run was just absolutely, absolutely bonkers. And then you have the next um, bearish cross over here, and a bullish cross over here again, it kept on going for about two years, went from the 50s to about the 340s. And you have now just had a bullish cross over here. Could it potentially go on for another year or two? Quite possibly so. Um, you're talking about if you're worried about any short-term correction, yeah, sure. You know, whenever a price gets a little bit too far away from the blue line over here, which is the 10 can order conversion line, whenever we get the price gets a little bit too far, generally you have a little bit of sideways to downward action, kind of get a little bit closer to that before pushing up further, right? Over here, we had the correction over here in April because price went way too far, way too fast on the month of March. And it's really got a little bit too far away from the blue line over here. April got really close, didn't really quite touch it. And then May say, okay, this correction is enough. We're, we're going higher from there. The fundamentals are intact. They're growing. The P ratio is actually not that huge in comparison with the, to what the growth rates are. 
And uh, yeah, I mean, we want to go higher, maybe a little bit of a technical sideways over here before going higher, right? These things happen when it gets too far from the blue line, from the Tenkin, price goes sideways over the half a year, right? It, when the price gets too far over here, go sideways, go sideways, right? No big deal. That's kind of what we did. Now we just end up pushing a lot higher now. Now, going back to the Bull in Japan, are you worried that the Bull in Japan expansion is just way too parabolic? And that it's not sustainable. But look over here, you have candles number one, really one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine candles closing above the upper bull in Japan from the year 2016. Right now, we have maybe a couple of bull in Japan um, closer, like above the upper bull in Japan here, and we cool down. And now we have another month close above the bull in Japan, but it's not consecutive. Like, so far, there's no reason thing that this bull trend is exhausted because there's just so much like overheatness going on here like there we're just not really seeing that so this actually allowed for a little bit more of a sustainable bull trend to continue to just push price up higher which is very very difficult for you to kind of wrap your head around because price went from like a hundred to like a thousand in just a matter of a year and a half and a lot of people have been kind of left behind and they're worried whether or not they're, they're topping whether or not we should go ahead a lot of people are really worried right now, but I'm just kind of showing you, I think it's probably going to end up going higher. And there's a lot of support to kind of tell you that, hey, I think we're going to be okay. I think things are going to be just fine. There's not really any warning sign right now in general for a um, really the best of class chip manufacturer um, or designer during an AI hype market, bull market, that can keep on going for like years and years and it, it, it doesn't have to stop. <laughs> which is kind of insane to think about, especially the wells are all in. Like the, the, there's no really any big warning sign quite just yet, right? The other thing to kind of look at too is if you want to look and see what's happening with price targets and things like that. Um, before I jump into that, I, I do want to talk a little bit about my friend, Danny. Danny is a, is a good friend. He has a really good system. If you're not very good when it comes to the um, technical analysis, if you're worried, all you have to do is, I'm going to play a video here. I did a video with him um, about like a week or two ago to talk about NVIDIA. All you really have to do is to try to see what the whales are doing. And Danny is kind of like the whale whisperer, if you will. I, I'm going to play this two minute clip here kind of let you know about his system and look, look at how like very accurate his monthly chart over here is this is a monthly chart and each candle represents a month over here so we're still let him talk again um so we've got two very important candles which i have to keep repeating you know um yeah. the yellow candles and also the red candles so um yellow candles means sell you are uh, bearish or sell sell signals so whenever the yellow candle appears what you have to do is to follow the signal reach it there and sell on the market and if you really do so so actually you can avoid the bear cycle which comes uh, afterwards so you, you will see that every time you sell when the yellow candle um, appears there is a bear cycle so and until the almost the end of the bear cycle uh, there's a red candle which is a buy signal which is a bullish signal and if you follow it then you will gain 5x or 6x in NVIDIA, I mean. So actually these are very important candles which all of our followers have to know, yellow candles and also the red candles. And um, so additionally, so after the appearance of yellow candles, because it, it can't be all the yellow candles all the time, you know? So when yellow candles appear, um, that would be light blue candles, which mean the continuation of the bearish cycle. Mm -hmm. or, or the continuation of the um, um, bearish trend, okay, until until the red candle appears again. Yeah. And then um, after the appearance of the red candle, we, we, uh, we will have the dark blue candles, which mean the continuation of the bullish cycle, the bullish trend or the uptrend. So yeah. that's why there are four colors, which we all have to remember if you want to trade, if you want to invest, because they are most of the times accurate signals yeah they're, they're pretty they're pretty good definitely on the on the daily and the weekly you get a lot of noise like that's just going to exactly happen. but on the monthly it's been really good in terms of telling the cycle um it mm. doesn't time the exact cycle top but it's pretty close yeah 
Yeah, it doesn't time the exact cycle bottom, but it's pretty close. So you 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 need some confirmation, you know, and when you get the candle here, usually that's pretty good confirmation that it's probably time to buy. You know, it, it, this happened really for the last like five years to like seven years. You, you only really have like a sell candle twice and you had a buy candle twice. And it's been mm -hmm. so far for me, exactly. it's been very, very accurate. So, yeah. Exactly. So, so if you don't want to think too hard, you know, you, you, everyone I know who does really good work and shows you their logic is basically saying that there's not really any particular warning sign for NVIDIA. If you like Danny's analysis, again, his handle is Danny Chang 2022. Give him a follow. He does have a Patreon as a paid service, but you know, like for a big stock like NVIDIA, like if I, if he and I, if we see warning signs, we're going to let you know, like it's not something that you absolutely have to pay, but he also, this guy works very hard. Like he does like, you know, 40, 50 hours a week to on his Patreon. He pays like, he, he puts like thousands of charts. You know, if you're interested in all kinds of charts analysis, like you can go talk with him. Um, you can ask him, you know, questions. He's very, very nice. But this is a very good system. It's for people who want to know what whales are doing, who really wants to, you know, kind of um, see what the bigger picture is in terms of what the whale funds are doing. You don't even have to really worry about it. And this is on top of the fact that a lot of people who also study the fundamentals, if they really know what they're talking about, rather than just going off of price, like a lot of people, Wall Streeters, go and see a they don't really think, they don't really talk, they just talk like these nonsensical things based on, oh, the price just gone away too much, you have to have a correction. And oh, you know, this is, this narrative is like bullish, but it can turn any time. It, it doesn't really help you. <laughs> I'm just trying to say like none of the stuff that they really talk out there is really like trying to help you. Um, I'm not saying that like we're necessarily going to be able to help you, but I'm, I'm saying that we're, we're going to try. That's the, and, and we're not giving you any particular advice. We're just going to, all I'm going to say is that we're here with you. We're here with you. We're going through the same thing. I'm not all in, you know, um, I, I do have a very diversified portfolio, but a big part of my portfolio has a lot of NVIDIA and semiconductor stock exposure, and I'm using leverage, you know, so it, it's, we're with you. If we lose money, we lose money together. But this is not financial advice. If, if anything, this is more for entertainment, I guess. But that's one, that's one idea to kind of pay attention to. So far, the cycle is still intact. There's not really any particular reason to think that that's, that that's the case, right? I do want to go talk a little bit about uh, price target. And to talk about our target, I do want to talk about another one of my friend, uh, Matt Hughes, 13, the great Maspi. We did a video a couple uh, couple of weeks ago before NVIDIA earnings. I just want to give you like an incredible accuracy to, to kind of show you in terms of what he thought before earnings actually came true. Um, after earnings, uh, price went up to like 1,000, for uh, 1,040, 1,050, somewhere around there, which exactly hits his target. It actually currently is at, it actually went a little bit higher and got rejected from you know another level above. I'm just going to let you listen into what he said here um, about a couple weeks ago. So I'll start with a linear scale chart here. Uh, we'll make this a little bit bigger. I like the log scale chart a little better, I think, just because linear scale, you can't even see anything here. It's like nothing happened <laughs> I know. Yeah. down here. <laughs> right. But what you can see perfectly hit is wow. this orange line. It hit perfectly, and then it went back down here, and then and it broke. This bullish engulfing candle uh, just broke through both levels, right? The angle and the orange line, and that's why it didn't really look back. And you can see it just back tested that forty-five wow. degree angle perfectly, which really kind of means that there's going to be a magnet to price up here around a thousand forty, right? So yeah. that this probably this probably will be the target for earnings. Really, a thousand forty is what I'm really thinking because the, the target hit. By the way, um, I find it to be absolutely incredible it already back tested this zone it even hit the top arc again too right yeah. right there yeah. so uh it's really saying this is going to be the target maybe even these arcs up above yeah but uh this is just for the shorter term we would have been hitting some of these arcs about and so we're getting rejected just so you know and so if we go switch to log scale over here for nvidia yeah, let's look some crazy targets <laughs> on the log scale. yeah <laughs> well, log scale, I was, I don't know if you guys saw my video I made like last year or something about like why NVIDIA is not going to go to 400, it's going to go to 700. And like, this is why it went to 720 because of this line. And you can mm -hmm. see it did stall out there for a few weeks. I was expecting it to even come back and back test this really. Yeah. Um, and that was going to buy more, but it never got to my level. So I never bought more. That's but um, 
just looking at log scale, you can see how perfect the 45 degree angle has held as a support level the whole time. Even the blue line going across was also a magnet for price. Yeah. And back here during COVID, it almost even successfully back tested the 45 as well. But also that orange line down here in the past has always been uh, a support level, really, right? So it's just beautiful how this log scale chart really looks, uh, which really means ultimately it's an NVIDIA. NVIDIA, is it NVIDIA or an NVIDIA? I don't even know. <laughs> I don't know. NVIDIA. <laughs> NVIDIA. But... Uh, Nvidia, yeah, which which ultimately I think the longer term target since this line looks like it's flipped to support now. It's so seven hundred. It's going to serve as pretty important support. Um, it, it's we we is this this stock is so strong that it couldn't even hit it. It, it tries, but it couldn't. This is how strong Nvidia is. It's probably going to be these dark, which will be fifteen hundred, maybe yeah. the top arc, maybe it's like two thousand. And I don't know if it'll get higher than that, but if it so, so fifteen hundred and two thousand, right? It does if these get flipped, then it's going up here to like nine thousand one hundred and forty-two, right? So that's nine thousand. I'm not saying that it's necessarily going to hit the cycle, but if price gets above these arcs over here, around fifteen hundred to two thousand, that would potentially be the next magnet, potentially. Assuming if this bull market keeps on going for two, three, four years, it, it's possible. You're really talking about a huge market cap for Nvidia, um, but they keep printing money. Like if you look at the M2 supply, like they're really reversing the quantitative <laughs> tightening to now starting to have some quantitative easing now. Like they're not lying. Like this, pay, pay attention to what they do, not what they say. It's pretty large. Uh, I don't yeah. know how large. Pretty large. Long in the future that would happen. But if you also look at the Ichimoku for uh, all right, I'm going to end right there. I just want to show you like some of the targets are possible. I'm going to go back to my NVIDIA chart here, just kind of show you um, what I'm thinking. But again, if you enjoyed the analysis, the great mass V Matt Hughes 13, he does have a course over here in the GAN, but I mean, I'm done promoting him. I, I'm, I'm, I don't get anything in return except for the fact that I'm a fan. That's all I got to say. If you look at the Fibonacci levels, I'm trying to figure out what the pri potential price target is. A couple of ways to draw it. You can draw it back here around the um, trade conflict. You can draw a couple of Fibonacci levels here. If you, if you draw it in a linear scale, it's not going to tell you anything. It's price already way above it, so you can change it over to lock scale. If you draw it a lock scale, it's going to tell you a little bit more, something a little bit more interesting thing here. What is happening right now? What is happening right now is price got rejected pretty close to the um, 4.236 level here, which is going to serve as, you know, unfortunately, going to serve as resistance up here around a thousand um thousand hundred and seventy six dollars right one one seven six right so that's one level to kind of consider if we end up getting rejected some of the support level again 700 right 700 is going to be really really good support level do i think it's going to go back all the way down to 700 based on what we're seeing with the whales based on what we're seeing here with you know a lack of bearish divergence here on the monthly based on what we're seeing here in terms of the trend based on the fact that it couldn't even back test all the way down to 700 on this candle when they really tried to do it back in April, but everybody just started coming in and just buying it. Probably not, right? So remember a couple levels, 700 strong support, you rarely gets there, I would buy like heavy. I'm not sure it was gonna get there. We got rejected up here around, you know, 1176 and a couple other levels can pay attention to, right? If you draw it instead of doing from the um, trade conflict here, we draw it from the 2021, 2022 top and bottom. If you do a Fibonacci level, I'm going to do it in a linear first. I'm going to show you that right now, actually, it got rejected from that, you know, 4.236 level from before, right? Around 1176. And it got rejected and it got back down here to close to month, right at the 4.236, right underneath the 4.236 here, which is around 1,000 and 100. It's actually quite incredible in terms of what NVIDIA has been doing with regards to these Fibonacci levels. It's actually quite fascinating because it got perfectly rejected over here at the 1.618 and it also got perfectly rejected over here at the 3.618 levels. So it's been respecting these kind of Fibonacci levels to you know, very, very well. Right now it's kind of broke back above both of these very important resistance levels over here. 
and looks like it's probably going to go higher now in terms of if you if you're tired of looking at the um, linear scales look at the log scale right the log scale again 715 and pretty important um, support level beyond that you're really talking about potentially 2300 and i mean these targets up here are just absolutely insane i'm not sure it was necessarily going to hit this cycle but it could right and remember what Matt was saying, if you go up to like 9,000, could it stall around four or 5,000 and just call it a day and go down? Possible, could it stall at around 3,000 or, or 2,300 and stall and go down? Possible. We're gonna look for warning signs as it comes. None of these price targets are gonna be absolute, but all I'm gonna say is we are doing this technical analysis and for folks that are doing fundamental analysis, you know, to really look and see whether or not there's any trend change in terms of their fundamentals, in terms of the top line, bottom line. And for technical analysts who use these different kind of tools to try to help themselves, like I, like myself, I'm really trying to look at these and try to analyze this myself, try to find patterns, try to find what it's potentially going to do next. And I also know a lot of people that I respect a lot. I, I enjoy their analysis. I think what they're saying makes sense. I look at what it is that they're doing and what they're doing is a lot of great work. And I think that when I listen to the bears, they really don't have a very, very good argument. Like their, their fundamental arguments are flawed. The um, technical arguments are basically just based on things like, oh, things are overbought and it has to come down to the ground. I, I'm, I'm just not so, so sure. I mean, like you have to know that currently the sentiment for media is not everybody wants to be in. Like a lot of people are actually scared of the stock a lot of people are actually very, very scared of the stock. And you are talking about, um, if you look at the weekly, you are talking about some bearish divergence over here, right? Price go up. And if you look over here on the weekly, like this doji candle over here, technically it's like a little bit like, oh, maybe it could potentially signal reversal, right? But doji basically just means that nothing has happened for this week. That's basically what it means, right? Like, yeah, it could be a top over here, but it doesn't have to. I can see, I've seen like kind of these doji candles they're just like continuation candles so so far it's a little bit meaningless we're going up on bearish divergence here on the month on the, on the weekly here but guess what on the previous cycle we keep on going up on bearish divergence like bearish divergence is happening throughout the entire trend up here on the way up you know bearish bearish price up rsi down price up rsi down it, it just keeps on happening and price just keep on going up on various divergence for like two or three years and price went up from like 13 to like 70 on various divergence right so so what you have a little bit of various divergence here i'm not scared um I, I, it doesn't really bother me if you're looking at the monthly you're just like oh you know it's, it's, it's definitely overbought you know guess what it's been overbought for many years at a time you can stay overbought for about like three years and price can st and stay overbought from like five dollars all the way up to like you know seventy, and price also can st stay overbought here for like two years and can stay overbought from all the way to like fifty bucks to like three hundred and thirty three hundred forty right. So right now we we're just starting to get a little bit overbought. If anything, I think the RSI signature over here is a little bit similar to over here. So that could potentially signal that hey maybe there's still a lot of runway up. I don't know for sure. Nobody knows for sure. We're all looking for warning signs listen to Danny, listen to Matt, listen to myself, and listen to yourself. None of the things I, that Danny, I, or Matt says matter if it doesn't make sense to you, if you're not able to analyze it yourself, if you're not able to judge whether or not what we're saying are correct or not, if you're not able to understand what we're saying is not an absolute truth, but we're all trying to use different tools to try to analyze what could happen, and we all do the best darn job we can, but none of us, one of the things that we're saying are truths, but we have our money in the line. And if we're wrong, we go down with you. And if we decide to leave before we leave or before we deleverage, we'll let you know. That's all. Have a good one. Bye.